Welcome to Tea Time with Shaylee and Amber, the podcast where we talk about all the shit that your horse wants you to know and what you can do about it. Amber is a horse trainer and a personal results coach, certified in Theta and Semitic Breathwork. Shaylee is an animal communicator who also teaches communication. Both knowledge seekers with the intention of sharing that knowledge and hoping that we can encourage the listeners to do the same. Welcome to today's episode where we explore everything from deciphering intuition and parasite cleanses to horse insights and personal growth. Join the conversation of self-reflection, overcoming fear in horse care, and the importance of diverse perspectives. Stay tuned as we share valuable nuggets on boundaries, autonomy, and a sneak peek into our future episode on biting. See you guys in there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving tomorrow, actually, if you're listening real time. Um, mm-hmm. So happy Thanksgiving. We are, um, well, I was going to say we are holding ourselves accountable. That's a lie. Amber is the accountability <laughs> master of this relationship, and <laughs> she is the one that causes us to show up every week for you guys. Um, last if you week last week. <laughs> Yeah, last week, I was going to say, last week, mm, we released Catherine's episode, which actually is a really, really good episode. And no, we didn't. No, we didn't. It's on my thing. It was two weeks ago. <laughs> You're in like a time warp. Oh, two weeks ago. Okay. The last podcast that ever lived is Catherine's okay. and um, it's a really good one. So if you want to listen to the one that is most recent, it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're clearly... We're clearly doing great. Yeah. So um, I have a few things that I feel like we should talk about. But the first thing that comes to my mind, and I'm curious, like, what happens for you? But I'm in this space right now where I'm questioning if things that I'm getting are, like, a premonition or if they're a manifestation or if they're emotional worries. And I feel like I don't always know wait, okay, backstory. I started following a few Instagrams about parasites and I got real weirded out about like all the parasites and all the food. And it's this person, the one that I follow the most, this person will like cut apart bananas or just like literally anything chicken and just show all the worms and nastiness that's in them. And so I got freaked out that I had a parasite. And then recently, like probably like the last So as you guys know, Chico got a parasite. We got the donkey. He like infected everybody. And then I'm like, can that happen to people? Because I've been having this like intense worry of like people around me dying. And I was reading in or just like loss in general, like this sense of like loss, but it's like more of like a death loss. And then I started looking in our Theta book and I saw that when parasites die, they make you feel like like you're going to die or you get worried about death because you're feeling their energy and their like their little thought processes. So I'm all freaked out about that right now. But I say all that to say, how do you think you can decipher between what your what's yours and what isn't? And then how do you know if you're getting a premonition about something that's going to happen and then it happens versus manifesting it? Yeah, those are my two things. That's the question that I have, but my question is always like a different version of that where it's like, how do I know like this is my intuition versus um just my old shit coming up and being triggered and me being like worried about stuff that I don't need to worry about or that my nervous system is saying I need to worry about, but it's from old stuff, not necessarily in the moment. And um I feel like, well, I feel like I asked that question to Rochelle last week and we basically went to the, to the plane. So the plane of truth, I was like level no. Uh, And, and went there and got truth around it. And basically what I received was I think the truth is going to come from your heart. But what I recall and what I used to use and what I still use most of the time is when I have that thought or that whatever you want download or whatever you want to call it, what nervous system am I in when I'm receiving it? 
And so in that moment, if you check in and you're like, wait, like, how do I actually feel right now? Okay. I had that thought and maybe it caused my nervous system to spike and get a little like frantic, but like right before that, what was I doing? What was I thinking about? Was there a buildup to that? Was there a story buildup around it? Or did it just like pop into my head out of nowhere? You know what I mean? And I feel like that helps a lot because usually if you get some, if it's like your old story attached to it, or if there is like some um, other stuff around it, usually you're already kind of like in a mode of feeling a little bit like frantic and worried and have anxiety or whatever. And then the salt pops into your head and you're like, oh God, <laughs> versus I'm going to get really grounded and breathe into my heart and then just ask for truth around this thing that I don't know how to decipher if it's truth or my old stuff. So that was like my default for a long time. And I think I just forgot about it until we started having all these moments. And I was like, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. I know the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, one, it's five, five, five here. So a little validation. And then um, I also feel like that makes a lot of sense because when I get in the past, I guess, historically, when I would get like an intuitive download, like, oh, something's going to happen to this person. Or um, sometimes it'll be with my husband where I'm like, oh, he's going to like get this flight canceled or this. And it's like, when I get that intuition or that sense, it's like emotionless. Like I don't have any emotion attached to it. I'm just like, oh, huh. Like it like comes in and out versus, yeah, sometimes if I'm like, oh God, like he's going to die. I'm like, what's going on? And then I'm like, wait, that cannot be a premonition. Like there's way too much energy around that. So that makes a lot of sense. And then I wonder, is that the parasites? I don't know. I'm freaked out, but I'm on a lot of herbs that are like, that should be killing anything in my body. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like we had touched on that before, because I remember when I was helping Rochelle record her course, And we talked about parasites and she had said they have their own consciousness. So a lot of times when people are detoxing or doing a parasite cleanse, they will have like all of these thoughts and what they don't realize it's not theirs, right? It's like you're sharing your body with these creatures. (laughs) I know it's such a gross topic, but everybody has them at some level. It's like, um, and so what we started doing was a like, biannual parasite cleanse where well, I'm gonna mess it up. I call it woodworm. <laughs> Wait, is that what it's oh called? yeah. Um no. wormwood. <laughs> I always imagine that little I don't remember what it was from when I was little and there was like an apple and like a, a little worm would eat the whole and every time I say oh, yeah, worm, yeah with the little hat. I always see that whenever I think about that. But um And we do that. And I just recently had stumbled upon someone talking about doing parasite cleanses and how a lot of people don't actually prepare their gut and the gut microbe and all the things before they do it. And it actually does damage to your gut as you're doing the cleanse. If you don't prepare your gut for the cleanse, and then it leaves you more susceptible for parasite overload. So there's like a protocol that she does. I have to look into my, um, she's actually someone that's a friend of mine and she's a chiropractor, I believe on Facebook. I have to look at my messages and see who it was. And maybe we can attach some of her stuff, but she had like a month long protocol where the first week and then there's a second week and then helps. And then you have to use a binder to make sure you clear them out. Cause then you kill off all this stuff. This is a gross episode. You kill off all this stuff and it's just chilling in your body. You know what I mean? You got all these little wormsy carcasses. Ew. Um, so it's important to also use binder, like charcoal and stuff to like move it on through. <laughs> gross. Oh God. That is so interesting though, because um yeah, I followed the one from the Theta book and it was something very similar where I had to do a liver cleanse first. So I did the liver and I cut out all sugar and I did all this stuff. And now I'm like six months into it. So it's probably where all the death is coming from. But now thinking about their little car guy in there is so gross. Oh Which, what I will say is <laughs> there was someone that I talked to recently. Maybe I should ask my animals if I have parasites because I talked to a woman recently who had parasites in her brain, like she got diagnosed with them and they were all 
dead, but they got encapsulated in her brain and they caused seizures. And the dog knew exactly what side of the brain they were on, or maybe it was my intuition. I don't know. Here's the thing, right? We don't know. We don't know anymore, but <laughs> I saw the more, we know, the more we don't know. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I saw what side they were on and everything and where her headaches were coming from. And like, um, the message for her was like, like to support the liver, which keeps coming up for both of us too. So this is like a, a year of liver cleanse. Maybe it's going to keep coming up until you actually start it. Cause I've already started it. So <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> but in December I am focusing on like 90% just me like me and my horses we'll take some lessons with some people and then also take care of myself while hibernating mostly not all the way <laughs> mostly except for a couple of tandem sessions but those are fun so yeah. um fun. but yeah liver and that's what anger resentment which I feel like I was just touching on oh we had a couple of calls so I feel like I've already talked about it but I didn't publicly talk about it where um a lot of the work that we do in some of our workshops we talk about like emotions and patterns and stuff that comes up and getting curious about those patterns and asking those questions like where is this coming from so that you can do that for your horse in a non-biased kind of neutral way and the thing that came up for me a lot um, was resentment which I think anger resentment is like family cousins and liver I think is where that all lives so that's probably why but there's a couple of relationships that I have where I was holding on to resentment. Everything has been forgiven and everything is like whatever about it. But there's still this like tinge of resentment when I talk to these or two people in particular um, that I feel like I hold on to. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be bitchy. I don't want to whatever. And um, Rochelle had helped me talk to resentment and ask resentment and like what are you doing for her and it what it was was resentment was showing up so that I could call my power back and then I could find my voice and find my boundaries um, I was using resentment as kind of like a little bridge for me to be able to do that and once I realized oh I can do that without holding on to the resentment I could soften that and let it go and I realized I don't have to be a bitch to say a boundary I don't have to, you know, be like starky to say how I feel about stuff. Like I can just do that without, but it was, I know people want to like get rid of these like lower level, you know, vibrating emotions and stuff, but really it's like starting to question why are they there and like, how have they actually been helping me so that you're not also rejecting parts of yourself? Cause that's what I was doing. I was like, I don't want to be a resentful bitch, dude. What's the deal? Like, how do we make this stop? And it was really like, well, what is resentment doing for you? And that's kind of a weird question for a lot of people when you ask them what this like more negative um, emotion uh, or response has been doing for you. And people are like, nothing. Who wants to be that? Or who wants to do that? But really, there's always a reason. Um, so getting curious is always, always my, is my jam. <laughs> Rocco agrees. <laughs> Rocco agrees. You know what's so, this is random, but Rocco reminded me for some reason. <laughs> the bark reminded me. But I talked to, this is like, we're switching gears, you guys. This is a weird episode. Um, I talked to a horse today, and I, can we insert a picture in? Um, Because I feel like I need to show him to the world. He is like this little Palomino. I've never talked to a horse like him in my entire life. I was like, this horse is not even real. I was like, I don't, I didn't know how to explain him to his person. And I was so excited to talk to, I felt like I was talking to like a little Jesus. Like I was like, who is this horse? And who, like, I was just, he was really cool. And I was like, I'm so giddy just like talking to him. Like, I don't even know how to explain what his personality is. And he's just so it was cool because he like had this red energy around him and I was like oh my gosh he's just so grounded and he embodies the color red but then he was like yeah all of my stuff is red and like we've outgrown mm -hmm. it and like you can ask her why it's red and like she had this whole story around like her first horse and how she put red on this horse because it was like strength and she, they were defying the odds and stuff and he was like talking about outgrowing that and like he had all these like deep insights for her, but it was so cool because she was sitting right next to him 
And every time I would give a message from him, I could hear him nicker. And she's like, oh, my God, he's nickering. And he nickered at, like, everything. It was so cute. And then there was one point in the conversation where I got the answer wrong. Like, I was just like, oh, I can't think of the right word to tell you. And she was like, he's flinging his head around like he does when he's impatient for food. And she oh was God. like, he looks so impatient right now, like, trying to get you to figure out this answer. It was so wild. It was like such a cool conversation. And he had like this, like these deeper messages for her around like her decision making power and breaking out of like codependency and in like her little bubble and stuff. It was so cool. And then today was actually a, a day of really cool sessions. I talked to another horse um, who was helping her person um, make decisions. And it's so interesting me to me, like how the universe works, because had I talked to this person earlier, I don't think she would have been in the vicinity to like, actually hear what the horse needed to say, like truly needed. And she's like been going through farrier after farrier. And, um, she like had just finally like gotten a rasp and the horse was like, she's meant to do my feet. And this is actually a cool topic especially the way that this horse described it. Um, it's kind of cool to talk about to the public. So she has had foot issues for like a while and the girl keeps going through farriers because she knows that something is off, but she's of course, like she's not, she doesn't know exactly what it is. And um, the horse was talking about like all the emotions wrapped around the feet and it's like her decision-making power and feeling like she can't like make decisions. And I was like, well, why aren't you doing her feet? And she was like, well, I don't want to be the one to mess her up. Like I, I'm afraid to make a mistake. Um, I don't want to um, like make her my guinea pig and stuff. But then it was interesting because she was like, but I don't feel that way about body work. Like when I do body work on her, I feel like I could be the one doing body work and I can do it just as good, even though I'm still learning because like I'm getting the feedback. And the horse was like, well, don't you know, like you can do that with feet. You don't have to finish the whole foot at once. You can like do a little bit and then set my feet down and like look at my reaction. And it was cool how she described that because I think part of what keeps owners like from doing their own horse's feet or from even just like learning and like putting themselves out there is there's this fear of like making them lame or doing too much. And granted, like with the rasp and with the knife, like you can totally permanently for a second like take some stuff off that you don't want to but um you can totally like intuitively do feet like that's how I do my horses and I was telling her like sometimes I don't even get to finish a whole foot like they'll pull the foot away and I don't ignore that and I set it down and then they like pick up another foot and I'm like okay now this one's sore some days I can only pick up one leg on them and I trim that and I was like it doesn't have to be like this whole complete thing um so yeah that was super interesting yeah, that is interesting because I think people believe, well, if I'm doing their feet, then I have to tie them up and then I have to, you know, get through the entire all four feet. And this is what the farrier does. But you know what? Like I was married to a farrier for a while. They also take too much sometimes and there's whoopsies and they go, oh, this one has thrush. And they run over and get the thrush buster and squirt it in there when really what has happened is they have gone too deep and whoopsied your horse. So it's like, you know, it's like everyone can make mistakes. It's like, I feel like people that are learning, they're going to be more careful, more cautious and more aware of like what is going on versus like I'm just gonna go fucking hog wild because I learned how to do this thing and like you know like not a lot of people would do that especially if they're already worried about that happening then you're obviously going to be even more cautious I know and that's what I told her too I was like you're kind of having blind faith in a random person that tells you they can do the job and they like don't know your horse at all and like they could totally be like obviously your horse is not super sound at this point so like there's an issue, like how, how are you going to make it worse if you're going slow? And I was like, look, when I first started learning and I like couldn't visualize it in my mind, what I should do, I got a Sharpie and like wrote on the solar plane and was like, don't go past here and don't go past here. So I could get the image. Like there's no linear way to do it. And I think it's so interesting because a lot of the horses that I've been talking to lately have so much energy around like 
people needing to make decisions that feel good to them because they know their horse. And this horse was awesome because she was like, yeah, you get to a place where you feel really good about certain things with me. And then you go ask someone and they give you a little input and then it like, you know, puts your cork back under the surface and you're like, Oh no, now I need to look at this when really you were feeling fine about it. And then you ask all these opinions. And so, um, yeah, it was cool. Cause the horse led her to do like some downloads around, like I can listen to the opinions of others without like feeling obligated to do that or to take on their emotions and stuff. And I think it's so easy to, I was listening to an Abraham Hicks thing the other day where she was like, yeah, the momentum gets really strong. And when someone has cancer, part of the reason why the momentum stays so strong is because you say you have it, you decide, you know, like, I don't want this or, you know, like you start getting your momentum in the right way and then you get another test and then you do another treatment and then you do this and then you do that. And every single thing that you do brings you back into that state of resistance. And I feel like we do that with our horses when we get opinions of others, which I feel kind of like I know what you're going to say because I sent you a voice message today and I was like, why do I ask people for their opinion or their advice sometimes? And then I don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> I don't want it to be something that I don't align with. Like, I'm like, what am I searching for when I ask questions? Because it like really annoys me if I ask a question and I think that they're going to be like either aligned with me or they're going to say something that will benefit me. And then when it's like negative or something that I don't want to hear, I'm like, ew, reject, like immediately. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's kind of what the first thing that I thought of was a your Torres and I have a small, tiny Torres um, <laughs> that I live with. And his immediate thing is he'll ask me stuff and he's like, oh, no, that's not it. I'm like, okay, like, why are you asking that? And so I was like, well, I think partially that, but then also I think because like as a human being, you want to, you want to be right. <laughs> you know, like it just doesn't feel good to be like, have somebody like, oh yeah, that's totally off base. And you're like, well, wait a minute. No, not for me. You know? So the initial response is like, ew, wait a minute. Um, but unless it's like something Cause I kind of feel like that. But then also if I'm asking a question, I think I'm really careful with who I ask. And then also I have to really like not know, you know what I mean? Like if I'm still trying to work it out, I like keep it to my, well, except for with you, but mostly I like keep it to myself and I'm trying to like, okay, let me get a really clear image of like what I'm trying to say. And I've had a really hard time doing that lately. Like, even when you ask me questions, I'm like, oh God, I don't know. <laughs> like my brain does not want to like look at things and formulate anything. I even told Shaylee, I don't know, it was like yesterday or day before I was like, I'm going to put my healing on hold. Like I'm all healed out right now. Like I just need a break from asking myself questions, trying to figure shit out. Like I'm tired. Like I just, I'm tired and I don't want to know. I, I just want to like pretend like I don't know how to do any of this for like the month of December and then just be like feral and then January be like, okay. So I wonder why I was so feral in December. Um, but I feel like I try to get really clear and then, but even I wonder, am I asking people if I say I'm careful asking who I ask and am I just asking people that I think might give me an aligned answer? Like, I don't know, like maybe. <laughs> Is that even a bad thing though? Because like, if you're just looking for an aligned answer so that it furthers your momentum in like the right direction, then I feel like there's not really any harm in that. I don't know. Yeah. And I think it's like, I can hear like, oh my, it's almost like the thing that I posted. I think I posted it today. This morning has been the longest day of my life. Um, and it was like, oh God, what did it say? It said, I saw this quote and it was about it. What I'm going to read it because I hate when I say something and it's not exactly what I was talking about. It says, I saw this quote, you're not healed. You're just isolated with no one to trigger you. And I was like, oh my God, is that me? Like, <laughs> like I feel, you know, you can stay off of social media and be like, no, I'm good. Like no one's upsetting me. Like I'm, I'm single right now. No one. I'm, you know, I'm feeling so great. I'm so aligned. I'm just doing life and everything's easy, you know? And it's like, is it because of, I've done a lot of work? Yeah, partially. But then the real testament to how much work you've done is when you go out into the world <laughs> and you hear something that 
you don't want to hear or somebody bumps up against something that makes you feel irritated or upset or whatever. And it's like, how fast can I recover from that? How, you know, how, how much time does it take for me to get like back to realigned, back grounded to like, wait a minute, like, why am I feeling this way? Um, And so, you know, me saying that, like, yeah, that's great and dandy and all, but if I'm super triggered by things that people are saying and I'm just not asking people or I'm staying off social media, is it because I've actually healed or I'm like really grounded in what I think about this? Or is it because I don't know? And then when I go into the world and people are mirroring to me that like my not knowingness, like it's like upsetting to me (laughs) because I really think I've done such so much work so far. Oh, it's really hard being a human. (laughs) I know it really is. And what's funny about all of this is that I have like a little sticky note on my computer right now because I did a meditation the other day and she just repeated it over and over again. And so I felt like she was literally like saying it to me. She was like, <laughs> let go of the needing to know, let go oh. of the needing to know. And so I wrote it down and was like, okay, that's going to be my mantra for December. Like let go of the needing to know. And it just sparked something that my husband and I say to each other. And I can't remember where it started. He would remember because he's got like the memory of an elephant. But um, we say, don't question it, just love it. And I can't remember where it started, but I feel like I need to like, because I'll be like, what is that? Or like, where did that come from? Like, he'll like get me a gift or something. I'm like, where did this come from? And he'll be like, don't question it, just love it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need to know all everything, all the details? <laughs> Why does <it> matter? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be my mantra for December. <laughs> so funny. <clears throat> this episode was kind of wild. It was real feral. It was real feral. It was. We still need to talk about biting, but I'm not ready yet, obviously, because I feel like we've already yapped so much, and the biting episode might take up an entire whole ass episode. And I feel like I, speaking of needing to be clear and like knowing where I'm coming from before we go into an episode, I feel very much so like I need to be really deeply grounded in where I'm coming from before I speak to that. And I'm mostly right now, um, but like a little tasty taste of it where my thoughts are going is like, why are we, and I think I know the answer to this, it's like kind of like, why are we making, um, humans creating boundaries and also having a say in what feels safe to them and not wrong. And I, I'm not saying everyone does that, but we're so focused on giving the horses space to say no. And, you know, um, and all of this room to have an opinion and have there be the word, um, autonomous, having it be like an autonomous relationship. And, But it's interesting because almost people sometimes, as we do, swing so far the other way that the horses are just walking all over them, you know, in the name of, well, this is their no. And I was laying in bed and I was just thinking of like, where do I draw that line? And I feel like what I came up with and what we can dive deeper in in a different episode is like the no for me, the boundary is the no needs to be away from me. You know what I mean? The no can't be a no and coming at me. But same for me. My no can be like I'm creating space around me. But my no doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to come after you with my no. You know what I mean? Like you're meeting them in this like, because I see so many people like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, he's saying no to me. And his no is like he's he's biting me and he's nipping me and he's pushing me out of the way. And I'm like, that's not that's not that's not safe for anyone. And we get so many questions around, well, how do I create a boundary without, you know, being too harsh or shutting their no down? And um that was just like where my brain started to go of like, let's not make us also saying no <laughs> to them and what's safe for us wrong. And I'm just going to leave that there <laughs> because I know for sure this episode, that episode will be like a big old fat juicy one. Um, But yeah, so that's where my, my brain was going like, go there. I'm like, no, don't go there. It'll be dark and we've got things to do. <laughs> Mm, do you have anything else bubbling no that's it (laughs) (laughs) well this was a real wild episode our little 
note taker is gonna have to try to summarize that one we went from like parasites dying and, 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 like we made it out alive though <laughs> we're both still here parasites and all <laughs> mm, but yes i will um start my entire whole ass cleanse for december and then maybe we can be parasite free going into 2024 <laughs> <laughs> energetically parasite free physically parasite free all the things cool well everyone Thank you for hanging out with us in our spazzy ass episode of all the random little nuts that we're rolling around today. And if something that you heard in here resonated, then drop it in the comments, share the episode, like it, do all the things. And we will see you guys next week or hear you or share time with you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>